Hello, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Anyway, today we'll be covering the best V6, arguably made by GM, the 3800. Anyway, let's get into the video. The GM 3800 V6 engine, often celebrated for its reliability and performance, has a storied history that spans over four decades. From its humble beginnings in the early 1960s to its final production run in 2008, the 3800 V6 powered a wide range of vehicles and left an indelible mark on automotive industry. The story of the GM 3800 V6 begins in 1962 with the introduction of the Buick 198 cubic inch V6. Now this was not the 3800, but we'll get to that, as this engine was derived from Buick's 215 cubic inch aluminum V8 with two cylinders lopped off. In 1964, Buick expanded the displacement of this 3.2 liter or 198 cubic inch V6 was up to 225 cubic inches or around 3.7 liters. V6 was branded as the well-known Fireball V6. We move into 1967 when Buick sold the engine to Kaiser Jeep where it continued to power Jeep vehicles. However, GM saw potential in the V6 design and reacquired it in 1974. By 1975, the engine was reborn as the 3.8 liter, or 231 cubic inch, V6, making the start of a new era for GM powertrains. The new Chevy El Camino, beautiful isn't it? Also, it weighs less and is a more efficient size that's almost 12 inches shorter. It has more head and leg room than last year. Incredibly, it's also a truck. It still has 800 pounds of cargo capacity. Double wall construction where it counts. And for 1978, standard V6 power, V8 available. The new Chevy El Camino. Who'd have thought a pickup could look this good? This engine quickly became a mainstay in GM's lineup and was known for its reliability and performance. The tech specs for this V6 at the time was a 90 degree bank in the cylinders, the block and head were made out of cast iron, it was overhead valve with a pushrod design, the bore was 3.8 inches and the stroke was 3.4 inches, and the compression ratio was 8 to 1. At the time, this V8 was carbureted but made 110 to 125 horsepower and 175 to 190 pound-feet of torque. The carburetor that was on this V6 was a single barrel carburetor, and of course there were two valves per cylinder. Let's move into the early 1980s, as the 80s brought significant advancements to the 3800 V6. One of the notable developments was the introduction of turbocharging. Buick's turbocharged variants like the Regal, Grand National, and GNX which were actually introduced in the late 70s, became legendary for their performance, as these models offered impressive power and torque, making them favorites among enthusiasts. When I drive down the street, the people all gather round. Gazed in wide wonder at the car I have found. 200 horsepower, no time for chrome. They can tell right away that it's bad to the bone. Bad. 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 To the phone. Buick Regal Grand National Coupe. Wouldn't you really rather have a B -B Buick? In 1988, the 3800 V6 saw a major upgrade with the introduction of sequential fuel injection. This move from carburation to fuel injection marked a significant improvement in the engine efficiency and performance. This V6 had upgraded horsepower, upping the horsepower to 165 horsepower from the 125 horsepower it had when it was carbureted and an extra 20 foot-pounds of torque going from 190 to around 210. Gas mileage of this V6 also went up from the previous 17 to 22 
to now 18 to 24 miles per gallon. The Buick Regal would also become supercharged in 1997 by using a 3 liter Roots type supercharger. Bumped the power all the way up to 245 horsepower and the torque was bumped up even higher to 355 pound feet. Series 1 V6 remained in production until 1995 when GM unveiled the second Series 3800 V6. This new iteration featured an all new block design as well as bumps in power to 205 horsepower and bumps in torque to 230 foot pounds for the naturally aspirated model. Well, the supercharged variant of this time, known as the L67, delivered 245 horsepower and also lacking on the torque with only 280 foot pounds compared to the previous 365 that the L67 had. The supercharged engine of the time would power such classics as the Buick Park Avenue Ultra and the Pontiac Bonneville SSEI that featured the supercharged L67 engine. The final evolution of the 3800 V6, the Series 3, was introduced in 2004. It introduced modern features such as electronic throttle control and updated components to meet stricter emission standards. Despite these advancements, the Series 3 3800 V6 did not utilize VVT, variable valve timing, a technology that was becoming more common in other engines of the era. The naturally aspirated version produced 200 to 205 horsepower and 225 to 230 foot-pounds of torque, while the supercharged version known as the new L32 delivered 260 horsepower, a bump from the previous 240 horsepower, but the same 280 foot-pounds of torque. Now this last generation Series 3 engine is my personal favorite, the supercharged version. I couldn't imagine something like a grandma car like the Buick Regal GS trim would pack such a punch. The GM 3800 V6 was known for its balance of performance and fuel efficiency. The naturally aspirated versions produced around 200 to 205 horsepower and 225 to 230 foot-pounds of torque. On the other hand, if you opted for the supercharged versions, you were looking at around 240 to 260 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque thanks to the Eaton M90 supercharger. Despite its robust performance, the 3800 V6 maintained respectable fuel economy, typically ranging from 17 to 20 in the city and 26 to 30 miles per gallon on the highway, which is rather impressive for a V6 of this size. The GM 3800 V6's legacy is one of durability, reliability, and versatility. Over its long production run, it powered countless GM vehicles, from sedans to coupes to even minivans. The engine's robust design and performance capabilities made it a favorite among car enthusiasts, who appreciated its potential for modifications and performance. Even after its discontinuation in 2008, the 3800 V6 remains a beloved engine in the automotive community. From its inception in the early 1960s to its final production run in 2008, the GM 3800 V6 left a lasting legacy. Its evolution through various iterations showcased GM's commitment to engineering excellence, making it one of the most respected engines in automotive history. Whether naturally aspirated or supercharged, the 3800 V6 provided reliable power and performance earning a special place in the hearts of car enthusiasts and everyday drivers alike. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like down below, and if you enjoyed this video or owned a car with a GM3800, make sure to leave your comments down below. And if you really like this video, maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.